Frederica. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a cat named Georgina. <laughs> I have one named Ethel. <laughs> because my dog is Lucy. Yes. Oh, how fun. So Ethel, Lucy, I wanted to name our other cat Ricky, but Jeff didn't want it that. <laughs> Ricky. Lucy and Ricky. That would that be just a little bit over the top, right? Yeah, Ethel and Fred and Lucy. So I just need a Ricky now. <laughs> that is so funny. So um, Renee, meet, meet, meet Mary Elizabeth, who's- Hi, in, Renee. Hi. Um, ten, Louisiana. Correct. Yeah, and Renee's oh. in Alberta, Canada. Nice. Yeah. So we have a nice triangle going we on. Do. Yeah. We do. Cool. Yeah. Jeff's joining us in a minute. We're just uh, loading some water into our cistern. Oh, wow. You guys have a cistern. Well, we have now city water, but now there's a leak in a line in our pasture. And so they've cut us off until the, the Ouch. until it's being fixed. So now we have to haul water, oh. Oh, which really stinks. So. Well, at least you have that option. Imagine if you didn't have a cistern, what would you do? I know. We've, You'd have to get a water truck and park it in your yard. Yes, we've done yeah. that in the past many times. Yeah. <laughs> so we didn't have water for a day and a half until we could figure things out. So now we have water again. So kind of nice. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. In this modern age, you'd think you wouldn't have to do that. Well, you know, water's the next hot commodity on the planet, right? Oh, yeah. It only costs us 50 cents to fill up our whole tank, which is ridiculous if you consider how much you have to pay for a bottle of water. Mm -hmm. 50 cents for a whole tank of water? Yes. Wow. So and I bet it's really good water. It is. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. That's really cool. So um, we're going to get started and we'll let people join as that happens. Um, I'm recording this so we can actually gift this to the world through my YouTube channel. And I'm going to do some processes with you guys tonight. I'm going to teach you um, some fundamentals around shifting, changing, and healing your money story. Yeah. Hi, Jeff. Nice to see you. Hi. Hi. Um, so I'm going to teach you some fundamentals around that. And then I'm going to do a couple of exercises with you guys live so you can, you know, immediately start to feel the change. And I'll give you some homework to actually start applying the process. And then um, I'll extend an invitation for you guys to join my, my mod nine module program that I'm launching in October. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to start off with just kind of creating a baseline and saying hi to everyone in the world that is jumping on this. And, um, you know, the baseline is that, you know, there's a thinking stuff from which all things are made, which permeates, penetrates and fills the interspaces of the universe. My thought, your thought, um, in this substance produces the thing that is imaged by the thought. So a lot of this has to do with our money story because we have these storylines around money based on what we were taught about money as a kid. And then because we have these storylines around money, and we live these storylines, sometimes consciously, sometimes unconsciously, what ends up happening is then our environment reflects that storyline back to us like it's some kind of truth, right? So we can form things in our thought and by impressing our thoughts upon this formless substance can cause the thing we think about to be created. And this is kind of where the rubber meets the road with people is how do you actually, um, I just want to pull up my notes. How do you actually uh, shift your focus, right? In order to get the outcome that you want. So last night I did this little introductory webinar um, on Facebook Live. And one of the things that I said during that webinar is, you know, we get what we focus on most of the time. So 
the challenge is how do we get our focus off of what we don't want and get our focus on to what we do want. Yeah. And therein lies the struggle. Like <laughs> that's, that's the struggle. That's the thing that causes the angst inside of us. And honestly, you guys, this has been, this has been a lifelong kind of quest for me ever since I was a little girl growing up on a farm in Canada, trying to understand why some people that were just a few miles from us were seemingly doing very, very well and had a completely different lifestyle. And yet we weren't. And other, other farm kids around us weren't either. So there seemed to be this big disparaging gap, you know, between thriving and suffering, thriving and struggling. And I really wanted to understand it because somewhere in my mind, I knew that it didn't have to be the reality, right? My little girl, the, the, the brain inside the little girl knew that this did not have to be my reality. So over the years, coaching, speaking, traveling around the world, working with different kinds of clients, I came into, just through that focus, I came into working with a lot of high net worth individuals and a lot of ultra high net worth individuals. I've had the opportunity of working with two billionaires and then lots of millionaires. So I'm a study. I'm sitting with these people. They're paying me to um, troubleshoot, problem solve, build, solution provider, an, an objectivity that they maybe can't see. And the whole time I'm being of service to them, I'm also observing what, how they think about things. Not what they think, but how they think. So, right. for instance, if you look at, say, some of the greatest athletes in the world, this, this is kind of always a wonderful place to start to hone your skill around how you run your mind. So if you look at some of the great athletes in the world, their ability to be the top, be on the top, be the number one, is their ability to focus their mind on their desired outcome. And then if you look at anyone that is super successful, regardless what industry they're in, whether they're a musician, an actor, a business person, um, an entrepreneur, you know, whatever it is they're doing in life, a mom, you know, that's got her ability to raise her kids really effectively. It's about being able to focus. And we are often not taught that as a child in a healthy way. We're often taught that, um, uh, hold on one second. We're often taught that we really don't know what we're doing, that we are, um, there's something wrong with us because we, um, I'm just gonna send this out. Someone just sent me a, a message saying the link wasn't working. Um, we're often taught that, you know, get your head out of the clouds, stop daydreaming, quit, quit, you know, letting your imagination run off with you. Right. Yeah, and, and it ends up actually drilling us down into this narrow chute where we think that it has to be difficult or we think that it has to be hard. And as soon as you think that something is difficult and something is hard, then it becomes exactly that. Right. Because when you look at the creation process, creating is creating. It's not whether it's something small that you're creating or something big that you're creating. Creating is creating. So it's really not about the size of the goal. And I remember when I first moved to Southern California, I kind of got into uh, reading Robert Schuller's books, Reverend Robert Schuller. And I was fascinated by this guy because he had built this incredible cathedral. It was the Crystal Cathedral and it's in Garden Grove, California. And you can look it up online. It's mind blowing. The whole thing is glass. 
And I, I took a drive down to have a look at it. And I was just like, wow, this is extraordinary. So the story goes is, you know, that he started out, he moved to California and he was building this congregation and they had nowhere to meet. And he was actually meeting at the drive-in theater back in the day when they had drive-ins. Mm -hmm. So, you know, then they were borrowing space and popping around and jumping around from space to space. And, you know, as the story goes, he just sat down with some of his key people that were dedicated to being, you know, around him and, and working with him on building this congregation. And he said, look, what's it going to take to build this? This is the idea I have in my mind. So one of them was skilled in the architectural field and he started creating the drawings and then they created a model. And what started out to be, you know, maybe a million dollar building or something was actually the money that they thought was going to go into the building. You know, a large chunk of that went into building the model. It was that expensive wow. the model. So he said to them, look, whether we have to come up with 500,000 or 5 million, it's just, we just got to chunk it down. We just have to chunk it down. I think the Crystal Cathedral ended up costing something like 20 or 30 million or something like that. It was an amazing amount of money for the time. And the bottom line is, is it just really came down to the belief systems, the points of view, and the mindset. Mm -hmm. Right? So this is the whole point I want to share with you tonight. Now, I want to finish up on this uh, quote that I was reading you. So in order to do this, I, you, we must pass from the competitive to the creative mind. Okay. So what does that mean? Competitive means we live in a state of lack and we believe that there's only so much to go around. And if we don't get our peace, there won't be anything left for us. And how that plays out is in your language patterns. It plays out in your belief systems. Like if I spend this money, I don't know where the rest of the money or the next money is coming from. Right. Right. So, um, hi, Aisha. Welcome. Um, so the challenge with that is that you actually block the flow of the money that's coming toward you just through your thoughts. So last night in the Facebook live, I said, never say, um, I can't afford something. Right. Because when you get into that space of saying, I can't afford, then you cut off the flow of energy toward you. You put a block that says, I'm not worthy of receiving. Hmm. I am not worthy of receiving because I cannot afford this. So you, it's to start out with, it is about shifting your, your, the things you say to yourself, right? So, so then it goes on. So what's the creative mind? So the creative mind is where you start to ask yourself um, questions like what else is possible? So write that down. Write that down. What else is possible? I have it written down. Come on, Jeff. This is for you. Here. <laughs> hey, Dion. Down nice to see you. I'm glad you got the link okay. So the thing that is around this is when you write things down, you actually... Um, start to create new neural pathways in the brain around that thing that you're writing down. When you type something, it only takes about seven neurons to fire to type entire sentences. Okay. But when you write with a pen and paper, right? When you actually write it down with a pen and paper, it completely triggers millions and billions and trillions of neurons and what? that then builds more neural pathways around the very thing that you're writing down so the exercise of writing 
I think the best way to unpack that is it, um, it triggers off a feeling. It triggers off a kinesthetic. And what I want to teach you tonight, what I am teaching you tonight, is I want you to get into the kinesthetic of money. Okay. Get into the feeling of money. Hey, Michael. Nice to see your name. I don't see your fabulous face yet, but we see your name. Um, so it goes on to say, you must form a clear mental picture of the things that you want. Because if you don't have a clear picture, you cannot get a distinct feeling. Do you understand that? The picture comes and the feeling follows usually. Not 100% of the time, not 100% of the time, because some people are just really super visual and they're not connected to their kinesthetic, their feeling side. Other people are just super kinesthetic and they don't need the visual. But I'm talking like in general terms for most of the population, right? And then you must hold the picture in your thoughts with the fixed purpose to get what you want. Here's where the rubber meets the road. At this moment, if you start to doubt, you have to start over. Because mm. you just negated the thing you asked for. There's nothing more powerful than wiping out an ask or a demand on yourself. And I'm going to use the word universe. So whatever your belief system is, you can, you can translate that to God, source, spirit, you know, whatever fits for you. So I'm just going to use the generic term universe. So it's like this. It's like you're, you're, you're swimming downstream with the current, let's say you're white water rafting and you're heading downstream with the current and you're full on. You're flying over the rapids and everything's going smooth. And then you start to doubt. You start to question. Is it possible? Are they gonna come through? Is the deal gonna happen? What if it doesn't work? What if, it, what if something falls apart? Mm -hmm. What if I don't make it? What if I commit to this and then I can't follow through? That's like spinning your raft around and trying to paddle up the rapids. Okay. You just canceled out your flow. So, you know, Marianne Williamson, great author, she said, you can't not, you cannot afford the luxury of a single negative thought. True. So if you don't have what you want in your life, especially money, it's because you have not learned how to be money. And nobody taught it to you because they probably didn't know either. Right. And this idea of chasing money through action is, first of all, it's gonna burn you out. First of all, it's gonna to totally burn you out. Secondly, it's going to put you in a space of trying to measure up, trying to get ahead. And the try concept is the biggest form of sabotage that I can even imagine. Because there's no such thing as try. Take the word try out of your vocabulary. No such thing as try. Anybody that's trying is really not committed. Just not committed. So then it goes on to say, so you must hold this picture of what you want in your mind with the fixed purpose that you will get what you want. When you do that for 17 seconds, oh, right. then you drop down into the feeling of being that thing that you say that you want. 
we call that congruency or alignment, right? So when you drop down into that thing that you say that you want the feeling of that thing, now you're one with that thing. Like you're aligned. You are one. And that what happens at that point is then it's like your intuition kicks in and you start to get guidance about who to call, when to show up somewhere. Maybe it's to send an email. Maybe it's to go somewhere for and grab a coffee or lunch that you would never normally go. Like weird stuff will happen. You'll get this voice in your head or this idea or this thought and you'll be like, well, I never go there. It's like, yeah, but you need to go there. It's like, okay, then go. Because I'm going to tell you something, you guys. Sometimes I'll be at my desk and I'll be working. And um, I'll get this thought that I need to, you know, go get a glass of water. And maybe I've got half a glass of water sitting in front of me. And I'll go anyway, because sometimes just getting out of my chair Mm -hmm. walking into the other room and going to the water dispenser and filling my glass, the shift in my body creates the inspiration for the idea, which leads to the call or the email or the deal or whatever. Do you know what I'm saying to you? It's about shifting out of your logical linear thinking and getting it yourself into a space of inner guidance. Now, if you're not used to that consciously, which a lot of people are not, learn to meditate every day. And if you go to my YouTube channel, if you go to my YouTube channel, I have a brilliant meditation on there. And you can download it and you can use it every day. There's five pivotal meditating tools in that video. You can start to play with them. And or after you get comfortable with using them, you can make them your own. And you don't have to do all five every time. You can, um, you know, you can mix and match them. You can play with them. I encourage you to do that. I just gave them all in that one meditation so that people could really start to learn to take ownership of their own process. I mean, I could break it down and I could make five different meditations, but look, at the end of the day, you're all the masters of your own destiny, right? So just dig in there and make it your own. And then, and I'm going to do one with you guys today. I'm going to do an, an energy pull with you guys. So, and then you can go ahead and you can do the energy pull at the end of the meditation and you can start pulling energy toward you because it'll teach you that instead of getting up every day and running out and going after stuff, it'll teach you to draw the energy of the things that you want toward you. Okay. And that's a major distinction. That is a major distinction right there, which is another program that we need to retrain ourselves in a way you know we kind of need to unlearn who we are because we've been taught these erroneous patterns and belief systems and so it's about unlearning those as much as it is about creating new ones right so then to wrap it up so unwaver unwavering faith that you will get what you want, closing your mind to all that may shake your purpose, dim your vision, or quench your faith. You can't be talking about what it is that you're demanding with other people unless they're living the same lifestyle. Okay. Keep it to yourself. Keep your own counsel. Okay. You know, I had this very conversation with someone today that um, since um, July, which is a short while ago, like the beginning of August, has gone through like a 180 in his life. He's changed 
everything. And he's done it with grace and ease and enthusiasm and inspiration. And he's starting to completely defrag all of his old limiting beliefs. And as a result of it, his friends are going like, what is going on with you, right? And so he shared from excitement some of the things he was doing and he was met with criticism. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, when I talked to him this morning, he was, he was feeling kind of, kind of down. And I'm like, then you got to learn to keep your own counsel until you build around you. Cause this is a lifestyle, you guys, this is not something that you just do for 30, 60 or 90 days. This is something you cultivate for the rest of your life. If you want to live a life of being conscious, mm -hmm. right? Cause a day off of living this process is a day of going unconscious. Okay. Where you just allow life to happen to you instead of realizing that you're command central and you're, you're the one that's creating all the relationships, all the experiences and everything else that you're, that you're going through. So that you may see, receive what you want when it comes, you must act now upon the people and the things in your present environment. So it takes the, um, the actual work and instead of the work being efforting, it turns the work into joy because you're still doing the activities, but the activities are coming from an inspired guidance within. Oh, I like that. Right? Instead yeah. of it being a have to. Right. So never say I have to. You don't, you don't have to do anything. I choose to. I choose. I choose to get up in the morning. I choose to run my business every day. I choose to talk. I, I choose to have webinars. I choose to help people. I choose to be healthy. I choose to be wealthy. I choose to be happy. And you gotta, it's like, it's, it's a training. So you're training yourself to think this way because you've been trained for a long time <laughs> the other way. And once you start training people in this, training yourself in this way, you'll start attracting people that, that support you because they think the same way too. And then you can start sharing. So there's two kinds of friends to have. There's friends that are with you and there's friends that are for you. The friends that are with you, as soon as things aren't good, they're gone. The friends that are with you, when you start changing things up, they feel threatened and intimidated and they criticize. The things that are for you, the friends that are for you are asking, how can I support you? What is it that you, that you need that I can do, be, share, right? Yeah. Right. So the, these are really important. So asking yourself the right questions, like a really amazing question is, what else is possible? How does it get better than this? How does it get better than this? When things are really, 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 really bad, I ask that question a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Like, how does it get better than this? Because then you pop yourself out of what's not working yeah into a new space of energy okay when things are really 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 good i say how does it get better than this a lot a lot a lot a lot <laughs> because then it 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 quickens it creates a quickening in the flow of energy So the quality of your questions will shift your negative self-talk. Okay. Yeah. 
So um, I just want to open it for some questions because we're, we're, I want to end on time and I want to do an energy poll and an energy poll takes about 10 minutes. So I'm going to just pause now for a couple questions and then we'll jump into the energy poll. Okay, I do need to ask a question. Of course. So I know that the the bad the bad thing to say is I can't afford this. Yeah. So how do you navigate that when you really can't afford it? Yeah. 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 So the the question then for that is what are the infinite possibilities around this? Okay, what are the infinite possibilities around this? Yeah. And what else is possible? What else is possible? And how does it get better than this? And how does it get better than this? <laughs> and so, he, but here's the thing, Mary. So, and this is kind of, this is where the rubber meets the road, okay? Okay. When you make a demand on yourself, Let's say you've decided to double your income for an example. Right. Okay, well, I'm just going to throw that out there. Okay. When you make that demand on yourself, in terms of congruency, are you really willing to do whatever it takes to create that doubling of that income? And so I say that to myself, all the time. Let me, let me, I'm going to just adjust the lighting. Okay. Cause I'm starting to lose light here. So there we go. So are you willing to do whatever it takes? So whenever I set a goal, a money goal to raise the bar on my income, I say to myself, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. What do I need to do here? I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I say that to myself out loud. That's the other key. Talk out loud to yourself. Okay. Talk out loud to yourself. And, you know, are you willing to do whatever it takes? Mm -hmm. Because most people aren't. Yeah. Like, I am. Right? I know you are because I've known you for a long time. <laughs> So, you know, most people get up in the morning and um, they just do the same pattern. You, you can't keep doing life the way you're doing it if you want bigger results. Right. It's well, I, not possible. I think that I've been in a, um, an aggressive attack mode that's not creating any kind of results rather than being in an attract mode. Yeah, because you're even compensating with action. Right. Doesn't work, does it? No, it's really not working. Let me tell you something. So um, about three and a half years ago, I went through this big um, change. And all of the ways I was doing things wasn't working anymore. So... For instance, I had had, I used to own a gym when I was in my 20s, and I used fitness to stay slim. That stopped working. Didn't matter how hard I worked out. Right. I used um, like fasting and smoothies to keep the weight off. That stopped working. And so when my body just refused to play the game anymore, I had to actually teach myself nutrition, portion control, timed eating. I had to actually teach it to myself. And while my body went through the reset, I gained like 25 pounds. And then once I adjusted, it fell off. Okay. So you go through these little correction phases, right? right. And the same thing happens with money. So let's say you decide to double your income. So then you have to say to yourself, 
am I willing to do whatever it takes to double my income? Because if you're not, don't make the demand. Because what'll happen is it'll feel like you're going 80 miles an hour on a freeway and you just flipped a UE to go the other way and you, your car is rolling down the freeway and flipping over because okay. it's out of control. It'll be so painful. If you want to create more and receive more, two things need to happen. One, you need to make a demand on yourself. Two, you need to be willing to monitor how you run your mind because that's where it all starts and stops. And you can't, you can't be negative anymore if you want a bigger life because you're thinking the life that you have now is what's creating is, is being created by the thinking that you have now. So if you want a bigger life, whatever that is for you, then you have to be willing to change that paradigm. It's just really the, the bottom line. And, and then whenever you catch yourself saying, I can't afford it, you need to ask yourself a question. You know, what else is possible? How does it get better than this? Mm -hmm. What are the infinite possibilities? And how are you going to know if you've gotten off track? You start to feel bad. I know the minute I start to think negative, I start to feel slouchy. Mm -hmm. Like fatigue, when people say they're tired, it's because of their negative thinking usually. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does that help you? It does help me a lot. I'm going to definitely ask the questions. And I don't think that I have stayed in a visualization of what I want for seven seconds, much less 17. I kind of revert back to, well, when the lights get turned off or when, you know, Stop that. It. Stop it. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Okay. So here's what you can do. This is how I trained myself to stay into that 17 seconds okay so 16 seconds 17 seconds what happens is this okay once you hit the tipping point of 17 seconds and you start start to roll it into like hitting the 60 second and then the next big sort of jump is 68 seconds okay so it's not a big ask like you're not asking yourself to like hold the thought for five minutes. It's like anybody can do anything for 68 seconds, right? Right. Right. So um, what I did to help myself, to train myself to function like that is um, I um, would jump around, literally. I'd put on music. Okay. And I would literally jump around. And I would dance. Okay. Because something happens. Um, I discovered this about 15 years ago, playing beach volleyball. And I was down on the beach playing beach volleyball. And I was doing my affirmations while I was playing beach volleyball. And really fast, things started to shift in my life. So then I started doing my affirmations when I was in the gym in front of the mirror. And my body started to morph. So my favorite song is, um, you know, the song by Pharrell, Happy? Yes. Yeah. So I put that on. Sometimes I listen to it 10 times a day in the beginning. Like, what is it going to take for Deborah to shift yeah. this thing? So, um, and then I would just dance around my living room and I would, I would like, I'm so happy. And I would say the thing that I was at making the demand about out loud as if I already had it okay I am now boom right I am now doubling my income right and, and more with total ease total ease joy and glory great. yeah glory <laughs> exactly okay cool 
So do you guys want to do an energy poll? And can I have permission that we go till about 10 after 7? Is that cool? Pacific, obviously, right? So. It's 7.49 here. Oh. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's, what is it? Is, is it 10.49 there, Mary? No, it's um, 8.49. Oh, you're only a little bit ahead. Okay, very good. Yeah. All right. So um, put your stuff down. Put your pens down, your papers down. Get comfortable in your chair. And uh, I'm going to do an energy poll with you guys. Close your eyes. All right, sit back and close your eyes. Make sure you're comfortable. If you can sit back in your chair so your back is supported and your feet are on the floor, that's awesome. All right, so go ahead and close your eyes. And I want you to just uh, drop down into your torso so you feel your body. And I want you to just imagine uh, the space outside of your skin about, you know, three inches from your skin. Just imagine that space outside of your skin. And now I want you to expand that out to the room expand that out to the room you're in and now expand it out to the space around the property you're in and now expand that out to the city you're in or the community rural community you're in and then just keep expanding it out past the entire country, past the entire planet. It doesn't take you guys too long for that. Just take it all the way out past the entire planet. And once you've taken it out as far as you can, then I want you to go ahead and I want you to expand it further. And maybe Dion, can you, um, I'm going to mute you. It's okay. Don't worry about it. You stay there. I'll mute you guys. I gotcha. It's all right. There. Okay. I got you muted. It's cool. All right. So yeah, because I can hear your fan whirling in the background. So, okay. So expand it out past the planet. So you're outside the planet earth. And now, as soon as you think you can't go any further, expand it even further. Expand it even further. Now, from this place, I just want to do a, a couple of little clearings with you. So any, um, any beliefs that you may have that have kept you from being, doing, having, receiving. I want you to go ahead and destroy and uncreate and delete those now. And all that is times a godzillion, right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pock, all night, shorts, boys and beyonds. And now any ancestral ties to maintaining a certain level of money I want you to go ahead and delete, destroy, and uncreate those now times a godzillion. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys, and beyonds. And now, any one in your life that you are not wanting to outgrow in terms of money, I want you to go ahead and delete, destroy, and uncreate that now. Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And now any blocks that resistance blocks that you may have around the freedom that having all the money that you could possibly ever have and beyond that, more money than you would absolutely know what to do with forever. I want you to go ahead and delete, destroy and uncreate that now. 
good, bad, right, wrong, pog, pock, all nice, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Now, what would it take to create a reality beyond this reality with total ease? And I don't mean just a little bit of ease, but I mean total ease. And any resistance you have to that, I want you to go ahead and delete, destroy, and uncreate that now. And all that is times a godzillion. Good, bad, right, wrong, pod, pock, all nice shorts, boys, and beyonds. Now, I want you to go ahead and I want you to uncreate your relationship to success. So I want you to delete, destroy, and uncreate your idea and your relationship to success. And all that is times a godzillion. Good, bad, right, wrong, pod, pock, all nice shorts, boys, and beyonds. And now I want you to go ahead and I want you to delete, destroy, and uncreate the relationships you have to the three closest people around you and all that is times a godzillion good bad right wrong pod pock all nice shorts boys and beyonds and now i want you to go ahead and delete destroy and uncreate your concepts of business and all that is times a godzillion good bad right wrong pod pock all nice shorts boys and beyonds and now i want you to go ahead and I want you to imagine whatever it is that you would like to create in the world. Like what miracle are you willing to be? What miracle are you really willing to be in this, in this lifetime? And I want you to go ahead and I want you to imagine that miracle and ask for that miracle. What is it that you want to be? And I want you to imagine it sitting in a ball of energy in front of your stomach, right in front of your solar plexus. And so go ahead and put in that ball of energy, whatever miracle it is that you would like to be, whatever it is that you would like to create. And then I want you to imagine from far out beyond this earth, start to pull energy from the universe, from the multiverse, make a demand on that energy and pull it through the ball of energy in front of your stomach and out your back and let it circulate back into the universe. And any blocks that you have to that being able to pull through you, I want you to destroy, delete, and uncreate that now. And all that is times a godzillion. Good, bad, right, wrong, pod, pock, all night shorts, boys and beyonds. And now pull. So start to just pull that energy, make a demand, pull with distinction, pull with demand, and just pull that energy all the way through every cell of your body, through the energy that's in front of you, and out your back and back into the universe, and just keep pulling and pull and just keep pulling. Now, as you're pulling, I want you to observe how that feels to have every molecule in the entire multiverse contributing to you and just keep pulling that energy through you. Keep pulling and pull some more and pull until you feel it in your physical body. Pull until you, your tummy feels vulnerable. Pull until your arms feel vulnerable. Your chest feels vulnerable, your legs. Every part of your being feels that energy contributing to you. And if you could imagine in that energy ball is the universe, is the multiverse, and you're pulling energy from the multiverse through the multiverse containing the miracle of you and that which you seek to create and run that energy through your body and out your back and back into the universe. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take some of that energy and we're gonna trickle it out from the back out our solar plexus in the front and just trickle it out to like thousand people, 
trickle it out. People that can just feel your energy before you get there, before you meet them, before you know them. They, it's your energetic signature. And when you get to that place and they feel you, they know you and they're contributing to you in every way possible through thought, feeling, energy. And now I want you to trickle that out to millions of people. Just trickle it out to millions of people. And now we're going to do one last pull. So now I want you to start to pull that energy in, pull it in, pull it all the way in, pull it all the way through the miracle of you, that which you are creating in that ball of energy through you, out your solar plexus, back into the universe. And anything that comes up that is to the contrary of total ease, joy, glory, and grace, I want you to delete, destroy, and uncreate that now. Good, bad, right, wrong, pod, pod, all nine shorts, boys, and beyonds. And now just keep pulling. And pull. And keep pulling. And pull. And one more time, I want you to pull just one more time. And pull. Excellent. All right. And come on back into now. Yeah. So what came up for you guys? Anything interesting? Oh, hold on. I have to unmute you. There we go. <laughs> Whenever I'm pulling in, I always get shivers. Uh huh. My body goes. <laughs> yeah, it's a buzz, right? Yeah. 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 How's it going, Jeff? What'd you think? <laughs> um, it was relaxing. Good. <laughs> I get up early, and um, so it was. I was relaxed. I have to admit. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I'll be honest, I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I tried to pull and push and, and uh, discard, delete, obsolete, and all those boys and girls and whatever you said there, but uh, anyway, it was, I have to say, it was very relaxing. I, yeah, whatever you said there. About, I know, it's said it's, it's good. And horns and boys and girls and... <laughs> And snakes and monkeys or whatever it was but oh yeah, it was good. I, yeah. that's yeah. incredible hey I, it ended in beyond and that's about the only thing i got i heard a delete and then create and then at the end i heard beyond and i didn't get anything in between oh and i just trusted that the universe heard you it's all good <laughs> it's all good yeah yeah how about you guys dion well i know uh, i um I thought about all the possibilities of, you know, new business coming towards me and old clients um, regaining their, their trust and faith in me. And, and I started realizing a lot of the thoughts I had that was blocking that. And I was just like, no, maybe I was a late on the order or that's what I was thinking. Why they haven't done business with me or something like that. I just started eliminating all those thoughts and just thought about all the possibilities of, uh, of millions of orders coming in and right. millions of clients coming in and, um, you know, new uh, manufacturing and all my fabric suppliers wanting to do business with me and um, how my mindset would change and how I would change in my family and how, um, 
I started thinking just about more and more possibilities, not about just what my circumstances are right now. Good. That's the whole idea, is to get into that new space of energy. Yeah. Aisha. I have to admit, I got distracted by the whole, um, <laughs> when uh, we, we got muted, uh, I thought he had muted us, so the, I just got distracted. So it was hard for me to get back into it and, and get back into where I was, because at first I was definitely visualizing everything and, and I got lost. So I tried to just relax and not put those, have those thoughts in my, in my head. And so I was. That's okay, it still works. That's the cool thing about energy. When you're doing energy work, it still works. You don't have to be like, um, what should I say? Like focused on it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And if I was have been sitting in a better seat too, cause I'm sitting on a bar stool. Oh, that, yeah, not so much back support with that, right? Zero. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. How did how did it go, Michael? Uh, actually, I became unconscious. I thought you were. You were yeah, like gone. Yeah. I became unconscious, and then I started uh, seeing things like the old me leaving and the new me coming in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's incredible. Good for you. Good for you. Thank you. And Mary. Yeah, I really resonated with what Michael said because it was like I just felt the power of who I really am. And that, you know, I feel like it's been kind of a plaster of Paris, you know, like a cast has been put around me. And so this was. I get you, Michael, exactly what you said. It's like the real me is just emerging through this. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. Are you kidding? Thank you. This is a compliment. Oh, my God. No, it was really good. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Well, you know, it's on my YouTube channel, so you could do this every day, Mary. Okay. In fact, I, I did look for it this morning. Every day. Yeah. Okay, I looked for it this morning and I couldn't actually find it, but I'll continue to look. I mean, I found your channel, Deborah Peters. Good, good. Okay, well, I'll send it to you because I have your thank email you. address, yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, so with, with the, there you go, yeah. With the energy ball, uh -huh. your meditation, you have us lifting our hands and feeling it. Yeah. The time I did it, like the ball was only this big. But now I've been doing it every day, twice a day. And now like the energy ball is like this. I can feel wow. it immediately. Wow. Yeah. It's really exciting. I know. I have that experience too where I open, I open my eyes and my arms are like this. Yeah. Yeah. And let me tell you, things are just popping. So I do it twice a day. Okay. Things are popping. In the last... What day is this, Tuesday? This feels like Friday for me because I've landed four new clients in the last two days and they're big clients. Nice. Yeah. And I had someone approach me that wants to be on my team that um, wants to rep all the uh, corporate stuff. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So That's cool. So do you guys want to know about the class that I have? Yes. Okay, good. So I'm rolling out this nine module shift, change and heal your money workshop. And it'll be done just like this. So um, we will work up via Zoom. Um, it's limited to eight people because I want to be able to work with everybody a lot. It'll come with all the supporting documents. And um, each class is two hours. So that's all the logistics on it. And we start on the 15th of October, okay? Um, so here's chapter one, or module one. So module one is being and receiving. So in the first module, we get into how to actually be money. Get into the energy of being money. Because when you get into that energy of being money, 
you, you can't shut it off. Like okay. it just flows. And the other piece that we work on is receiving. So I give you the tools to, to clear your energy so you can be in the space of receiving. Okay. Um, then module two is getting into um, the, the world of possibilities. Because what you're currently receiving is based on the possibilities that you're perceiving. Does that make sense? Yes. So what you're currently receiving is based on what you're perceiving. It's our perceptions and our points of view that keep us stuck. Okay. Right? So that's number two. Number three, number three is trusting yourself. So when you say, when you say a demand to yourself, when you say, okay, I'm doubling my income, you trust that. You trust you to make that happen. Because most people, that's where most people get stuck. They don't trust that. And that's why people have these unfulfilled goals. Yeah. You know, they'll say, okay, this is my goal. And it never happens because they don't trust themselves to actually follow through and deliver. Okay. Right. And then number four is what you're actually doing with your life is not who you're being. So it's aligning who you're being with what you're doing. This alignment trumps everything, everything. And here's the deal. One person in alignment is more powerful than like a million people doing massive action. Hmm. And that's what keeps the haves from the have nots, that separation. Okay. Yeah. And then next is we're going to get into wealth and fortune, how to actually receive and create wealth so that you feel a sense of stability, you feel a sense of security, and that compounds on itself monetarily where the numbers actually stack up. Okay. And then we get into the ease of money. Because whether you're creating the crystal cathedral or the shack down the block, it will be whatever you believe it to be. So the ease of money. Money should come with total ease. And if it's not, look, I'm going to say this and I'm going to, it might sound um, a little harsh, so forgive me, but it isn't a money problem, it's you. So we, sh we shift you, you shift you, and then the money is just, it's already there waiting for you to receive. You're just okay. blocking it from coming through. And then a future beyond anything you've ever seen. So creating the next reality and the next reality. So with this course, I give you all the materials and you can keep running these materials at the next level, the next level, the next level, the next level. Because I mean, I'm telling you, once you hit the monetary goal that you set at the beginning of the class, you're going to want more. And you're going to be equally as challenged to go to that next level as you are to go to this next level. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the nine modules are, hold on, let me put the link in here. So there's the link to sign up. So um, let me put it in here and I'll go over that with you. So for the nine modules, if you make one payment, it's 887. If you make three payments, they're 329 each and they're 21 days apart. And if you make two payments, they're 481 per payment. So it's a, little, it's a little less if you pay for the whole thing up front. And we'll start on October 15th. Um, and the schedule's a little malleable right now because 
I already have uh, two people signed up and they're totally flexible. They're like, whatever you want to do with the schedule, we're fine. So okay. the schedule right now is really malleable. Yeah. So any questions you guys have? No. You know, I, uh, I had one question uh, when you were talking about, um, you know, uh, forming a clear mental picture. Um, uh, do you utilize vision boards? Is that really something that can help you hold the picture in your mind? I don't use them that much anymore. As you can see, I have mine behind me on my, on my closet door to my storage. Um, because I like it and I used to make a thing out of it, but I'm giving you the neuroscience to move. Like this is, this is such high level that it's not necessary. I mean, you're welcome to have them because they're fun, but you know, if you notice, they're, they're slow to manifest. Because it's not actually shifting the neuroscience. So in our brain syndicate, we have um, a hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus is the transmitter receiver of our vibration. And whatever the hypothalamus is putting out to the universe is what we're drawing back to us as experiences and results. When I teach you these tools, you actually stimulate the hypothalamus to send stronger signals to attract in that which you're asking for. Now, I will say that to do this class, the prerequisite is you have to be willing to do the energy pull at least once a day and the exercises that I give you. Because the only way it's going to be is going to work is if you apply yourself. Sure. Cause, yeah, because this is this is literally repatterning your entire life. And as a caveat, you know, things are going to change. Things are going to change. You're going to have new people show up in your life. You're going to spend your time differently. People are going to relate to you differently because you're going to be more in your power. And some people aren't going to like it. So I just want to tell you that straight up front. I, I would like that kind of dislike. <laughs> <laughs> you don't yeah. like me because I'm in my power. I, like <laughs> I know. And some people don't. Like I was telling you about the gentleman I spoke with this morning. I mean, he, he was met with some harsh criticism and it wasn't nice. You know, they were telling him, wow, that's not going to work. Like literally. Because they were intimidated by how fast he's shifted. He's literally done a 180. Literally. Mm. So that when you do a 180 and you have all this um, structure built around you to support your lack, your limitation, your fear, your doubt, your right. struggle, doesn't fit anymore. It's kind of like I remember when I quit drinking. I quit drinking for over a decade. The day I quit drinking, I had, didn't have any friends anymore because I wasn't interested in going out to the bars and to the nightclubs. I was doing other activities. And they didn't come and change with me. They just stopped calling me. They stopped inviting me because I kept saying no. So I, had to, I created new friends mm -hmm. that supported my healthy choices. And so when you start making more money, sometimes your friendship base it has to evolve. Yeah. 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 So, so there's the link. Um, if you have any questions, you want to chat with me offline, I'm happy to do it. Um, and we can do that tomorrow. We can do that tonight, whatever works for you. Yeah. Are you going to email that link as well? I sure will. Yeah, I'll shoot it out in an email to you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much, Deborah. Oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you all of you for being here. I really, truly appreciate it. So let's just end this with all of life comes to me with Easter and glory 10 times. How's that sound? Yeah, and we're going to say it out loud together, right? Yes. Okay. All right, here we go. All of life all comes of life to me.
to me with ease, joy. All of life comes to me with ease, joy, glory. All of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. All of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. All of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. All of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. All of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. All of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. All of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. Awesome. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Have a great night, everybody. I'll talk with you tomorrow. Or you can text me and we can jump on after here. I'll shoot you my um, email address. And you can give me a holler. All right. Have a great night, everybody.